So, hello and welcome to another episode of The Void Guys. I'm James. I'm Matthias. Okay, and as we talked about last time, um, I'm a bit of a newbie to the Asterix world and Matthias is mm -hmm. the expert, okay? And we got as far as last time by uh, for downloading um, Asterix, the current stable Asterix 11 version. Mm -hmm. um, so what we're gonna do now is uh, show you how to go a little bit further with that. And for that, I hand you over to our resident expert, Matthias, <laughs> take you, it away. Thank you, James. Um, we just go uh, right to our uh, screen now. Um, what we can see, we just downloaded it. You can see the progress bar of the download mm -hmm. from uh, our last video. Yeah. Um, it just saves the file asterisk, minus 11, minus, and so on, uh, to my hard disk, and here it is in my home directory. Yeah. I am root, as usual, mm -hmm. um, um, because I don't want to run into some um, write problem stuff. Okay. <laughs> so I'm just I'm just root, uh, so I can install everything I want to. The first thing as root I have to do is to add some packages okay. to my fresh vanilla Ubuntu installation. Right. Um, what will I install? Um, the most important package is the build essentials package. Mm -hmm. Every time, if I want to compile something, mm -hmm. I need a lot of stuff on my system to do it. A mm -hmm. lot of tools. Yeah. Um, so I just installed build essentials okay. and there is everything in there. Then I need um, some special packages for asterisk. Um, we will uh, compile some SSL stuff, so I need SSL stuff, uh -huh. um, the development stuff of SSL. I will need some encourses stuff um, just to display menus if I want to choose which options are in the asterisk server um, and so on. Uh -huh. And here is a little trick. I also need the Linux headers. Okay. Every time if you want to compile some driver stuff, mm -hmm. you need the Linux headers yeah. exactly matching to the current kernel you're using. Right. So you could figure out what kernel version are you using and if you know it, then you can write it down mm -hmm. and it must be exactly the version you're using. Right. So there is a little trick, just use the command uname minus R, uh -huh. um, which gives you the kernel number. Yeah and then it automatically substitutes that command with the current kernel number. Nifty little trick. Yeah, so that's a little trick. So you don't uh, have to find out which kernel number you're using. If I just press return, then you will see I already tried to install <laughs> all the versions and they are already the newest versions. Okay. So, but if you have a really vanilla Ubuntu, then you need all that stuff. That's the first thing we did. Next thing is just to unpack our asterisk source code. Should be fast, yes. Then we go into the directory. As usual, if you want to compile something, uh, the first step is to read the readme file. Right, okay. So I don't read the readme <laughs> file because I'm an expert. Who does? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I did it uh, one or two times in the past, so <laughs> I know the content of the readme file. But um, now you should start the configure. Configure. No. Um, this is a, also a standard part. If you want to compile something, configure finds out what is your environment, what are the libraries, uh -huh. um, am I able to compile the asterisk? Right. Okay. Um, but this is the standard behavior. Uh -huh. Nearly every package is where you compile the source code. There is a configure script right. that just runs to uh, your system uh -huh. and tells you if everything is right. Uh -huh. As you can see, we get a great ASCII art asterisk uh -huh. logo <laughs> <laughs> that um, tells us everything is fine and the environment is okay. If you have not installed all the packages, I told you, mm -hmm. and then maybe it breaks and it says, oh, there is no package, blah, blah, you have to install it. Right. So okay. if you're using another distribution, just mm -hmm. run configure. Mm -hmm. And if it works, then it's okay. Mm -hmm. If not, do what the configure script says. Yeah. The next step is make menu config. And what does this do? Ma make menu config is an, um, I would say, optional mm -hmm. step um, as uh, the Linux kernel, if mm -hmm. you ever compile the Linux kernel, then you know it. <laughs> mm -hmm. There is a, a menu where you can say, I want that feature or I don't want that feature. Okay. Why is this? If you have a special case where you're using asterisk, mm -hmm. then you can 
disable some features. Right. Maybe if you disable things you don't need, it's more stable. Because if there is less code, there is more stability. Yeah, less things can go wrong. Yeah, that's true. So you can uh, go through that menu and just have a look. If you, if you really don't need something, then you can disable it. Mm -hmm. and there are some special things or new things or dangerous things which are disabled <laughs> by default if okay. you need one of them. Right, okay. Then just enable it here. Okay, fair enough. So, uh, as I said, an optional step, just um, don't do this if you're installing asterisk for the first time because right. most of the models, modules you need are in there. So it's more for the advanced user? Mm, maybe. Or if you need something special. Okay. The next command is the make command, which compiles the asterisk server. And now we're compiling, and we're compiling, as you did uh, see, the standard options. Uh -huh. So let's talk about which modules maybe um, you can um, use additionally. There is um, something we just did not install, or we are not going to compile. This is the whole um, the Hadi stuff. Okay, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. As you know, Ditchium, the, yeah. you can say vendor or yeah, inventor the of asterisk. Developer of, of asterisk. Developer of yeah. asterisk. Mm -hmm. They do not only have asterisk mm -hmm. source code right. and are maintaining the project, mm -hmm. but they also have some own hardware. Right, okay. Um, the hardware is in most cases used for going um, to the landline, mm -hmm. um, analog landline or yep. stuff. So there is hardware which you can configure and mm -hmm. use with your asterisk server okay. for all that stuff and the hardware you can get from Ditchium if you want. All right. Okay. Um, but in our case, we don't need that because we want a uh, zip only yeah. features. Mm -hmm. So we connect to a zip carrier. Mm -hmm. We connect um, to a um, to a gateway to a zip yeah. gateway. Mm -hmm. So we don't really need hardware directly attached to okay. asterisk. Right. Indirectly. Yeah. with the zip protocol, mm -hmm. but not directly in there. So mm -hmm. we don't have to compile all the stuff in there. Okay, fair enough. Okay, mm -hmm. then we do now a little fast forward <laughs> because yeah. it compiles about five minutes and yeah. we don't want to... It does take its time. <laughs> uh, we don't want to look at the beauty of compiling. <laughs> no, no, fair enough. Okay, <laughs> see you later. See you in a bit. And yeah, so we've finished the compiling now. And um, what's next? Next is that we install the asterisk mm -hmm. um, to the system. So now it's just in that directory mm -hmm. and it compiled everything inside okay. our directory, but it's not installed to the Linux system. Right, only. okay, fair enough. So the next step is uh, to install it. Okay. Then we have a look. Um, here uh, the script says, now do make install. So for everybody who don't read the readme file, mm -hmm. <laughs> he's now advised to do a make install. It's very quick. It just copies all the compiled files mm -hmm. to the Linux system. Okay. Um, one of the next steps is um, to go to the etc directory where all the configuration in the Linux system is done. Okay. And there is a subfolder called asterisk. And as you can see, it's empty. Right. So it has no configuration in there. Mm -hmm. Now you could, if you want to, you could create every single configuration file. Okay. I think there are 20 or 30 right. um, mm -hmm. files which you can create. I'm not sure we can count it afterwards. But, <laughs> um, there are many configuration yeah. files in there. Um, so what to do? We go back. Um, to our directory, and we can say in a test environment, we can say make samples. What does this? It just creates um, sample configuration files mm -hmm. so that asterisk is able to start right, okay. out of the box. Mm -hmm. We can now see what happened. Not in there, in the asterisk subfolder. And as I promised you, yep. there are many. There's quite a few things in there now. Yeah, we can we can we can count in. One hundred and five. So you don't should create them on your own if you. Yeah, that would take some time. And yeah, yeah. So the next thing is we can start asterisk. 
just asterisk is the asterisk binary, mm -hmm. and then we add some uh, things. So we add a C. Mm -hmm. That means we want to get the console. We want okay. to see what the asterisk server does, mm -hmm. and um, we 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 mm -hmm. because we want to switch him to verbose. Okay. And the verbosity level is three. Right. The more V's you're typing, mm -hmm. the more verbose it will be. So it just loads all the modules, uh -huh. and now you have a running asterisk server. Cool. Uh, it's not much so far, but mm -hmm. it's running. Yeah. <laughs> um, you can look at your zip peers. We have no zip peers, maybe. No, there is not one zip peer. Zip peers would be, would be our IP telephones later mm -hmm. on, yep. but there is nothing. Um, it is a little dangerous to mm -hmm. use the sample config in a productive productive environment okay, because why? there are switched uh, there are some some things are turned on mm -hmm. which you should turn off in a productive environment and there are some sample things okay. and some guest accounts and stuff mm -hmm. so you should clean the configuration okay but we will show this in, a, in another video okay but um, the next thing is if I press Control C because I want to get out of asterisk mm -hmm. console yep. then it stops the process okay. So what we need next is start script right. because we don't want to reboot our server uh -huh. and then we want to manually start asterisk. Uh -huh. That's not a professional way, I think. Okay, fair enough. So we need a start script. There is a special um, subfolder in the asterisk um, in the asterisk source code. Uh -huh. It's called. Um, Contrib. And in the contrib folder, there is again a subfolder init .d. Uh -huh. And this is the home of all init scripts. Okay. So you can see here many init scripts um, for different Linux distributions. Uh -huh. um, we have an Ubuntu server, uh -huh. but Ubuntu is based on Debian, mm -hmm. so we can use the Debian, Debian script, okay. start script. So what we will do is we copy it, rc debian asterisk to etc in the directory, and we call it asterisk. That's it, and we can test it. Maybe it breaks. Yeah. We have to configure the start script and we have to adapt it a little to Ubuntu. Mm -hmm. um, this is the next step we will do in our next video. Okay. So for now, we installed asterisk. Mm -hmm. It's up and running. Yep. You can start it manually mm -hmm. and it will work. Yep. But if, if you cancel the process, then the, pro uh, the process exits yep. and it's not professional. Mm -hmm. So we will implement uh, a new start, a start script. Yeah, a new start script. Okay. Next time. So that was it for today. Thanks very much. Um, Thank you. If you want more information about Pascom, uh, please visit our website, uh, www.pascom.net. Um, that's it from me and Matthias this time. Um, next time we'll be going through the start scripts and so on. Take care. Bye.